الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise is due for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and may peace and blessings be upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the one who has sent us a mercy to all mankind and to all of the worlds and May those peace and blessings be upon our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family and his companions. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of the basic beliefs of a Muslim. Those basic beliefs that every single Muslim must have. The basics of a Muslim's belief. And today, we're building upon what we have learned about La ilaha illallah and what we've learned about the situation that Quraysh and the people of the Arabian Peninsula were in. We've learned about the conditions of La ilaha illallah and we're going to summarize this and put it to you in a, another way in which you can really understand how it is that La ilaha illallah is the purpose of our life. Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran mentions two purposes behind creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Dhariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinn or mankind for anything other than to worship me alone. To worship me alone. And Allah Azza wa Jal in another Ayah of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawat wa min al-ardi mithlahun yatanazzalu al-amru baynahun lita'alamu anna allaha ala kulli shay'in qadir wa anna allaha qad ahata bi kulli shay'in ilma. It is Allah who has created the seven heavens. And of the earth, the like thereof. His commands descend between them so that you may know that Allah has power over all things and that Allah comprehends or surrounds all things in His knowledge. These two ayat of the Quran complement each other in understanding the meaning of La ilaha illallah and in understanding the purpose of our lives as a Muslim or the purpose of our lives as Muslims. Our belief in Allah Azza wa Jal and our testimony of our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be divided into two things and we must have both of them. One is knowing Allah and affirming what it is that we believe about Allah. And the other is acting upon that knowledge and that affirmation by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not be complete unless we had these two things that we affirmed and we know our Lord and affirm our knowledge of Him and those things that we know about Him. So we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our sustainer and we affirm it. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our provider and we affirm it. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord and we affirm it. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives life and causes death and we affirm it. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sends down the rain and we affirm it. And then we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has the divine decree and we affirm it. And the second 
that our actions and our intention and our worship is purely for Allah Azza wa Jal alone. These are two aspects or the two aspects which are mentioned as purposes for creation in the Quran. لِتَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ That you know that Allah is able to do all things. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I've only created the jinn and men to worship me alone. So when we join them together, we see you know Allah and you affirm Allah's names and attributes and his actions and then you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. If we go back to the belief of Quraysh, what do we see? We actually see that Quraysh in the vast majority of cases, with one or two exceptions, had the first part, but they didn't have the second part. So Quraysh were a people who believed in the lordship of Allah in the vast majority of instances, and they believed in Allah's names and attributes and actions in the vast majority of instances. They believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was al-Razzaq, the one who provides, that Allah azza wa jal was al-Muhi al-Mumit, the one who gives life and causes death. And they believed that Allah azza wa jal was al-Rabb, the Lord, the Supreme, that Allah azza wa jal was al-Aziz, the Almighty. When it came to Allah, they had that belief. When it came to Allah's actions, that Allah alone is the one who provides, and Allah alone is the one who sustains, and Allah alone is the one who gives life and causes death, they had that belief, as we've heard. Their problem was when it came to their actions with regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first category or the first division that deals with Allah's lordship and Allah's names and attributes, that deals with knowing Allah and affirming these things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this belief was by and large present amongst Quraysh. They affirm Allah is the only one who does the things that he does. That's part of your belief as a Muslim, that Allah is the only one who does the things that he does. But not only that Allah is the only one that does the things that he does, but that in our actions towards Allah are only for him and not for anybody else. And this is about sincerity and it's about action. And it's about when you go out and you act, that your actions that you do for Allah, you only do for Allah and you don't do for anyone else. And this is what was missing from Quraysh. So if you look at them in terms of their belief of the Lordship of Allah, you find, as we said, in the overwhelming majority, with a handful of exceptions, they affirm the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's supremacy and Allah's control and Allah's provision. That the things that Allah does, nobody does them but Allah. As for the worship of Allah, their actions towards Allah, their actions towards Allah were given to the idols and the trees and the sun and the moon and the stars and so on and so forth. They weren't given to Allah alone. For you to complete La ilaha illallah as a Muslim, you must bring both aspects. And if you want, you can consider them to be three aspects, and there's no harm in that. And that is an aspect that deals with knowing Allah, an aspect that deals with the Lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that is an aspect that deals with the Lordship of Allah, an aspect that deals with Allah's names and attributes, and an aspect that deals with the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether you look at it this way or that, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you know Allah and you affirm who Allah Azza wa Jal is and what Allah Azza wa Jal does and that nobody is Allah or does the things that Allah does except Him. There is no Ar-Rahman but Allah. There is no Ar-Rahim except Allah. There is no Al-Malik Al-Quddus As-Salam except for Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is the one that provides and Allah is the one that sustains that is one part. That is why Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that He created the heavens and the earth and His commands descend between them so that you may know that Allah is able to do all things. And then Allah Azza wa Jal created you so that you worship Him. So it's not just about you recognizing and acknowledging Him, but it's about you also directing your actions of worship towards Him and Him alone. And this is where Quraysh fell short. 
And these two are not separate concepts. The two of them are intrinsically linked together. How? When you know that Allah Azza wa Jal is your sustainer and your provider, and you know that Allah Azza wa Jal is your Lord and He does all of the actions that He does, could you worship anyone other than Allah? And this is what Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah when Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشَ وَالسَّمَاءَ بِنَاءَ وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءَ Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who spread out the earth for you, made the earth spread out for you, and made the sky as a canopy, and sent down from the sky rain, so that he could take out the fruits for you. فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ so do not make with Allah partners in worship when you know. Some of the companions radiallahu anhum were asked, don't make partners with Allah in his worship when you know that Allah Azza wa Jal is your Lord and your creator and your sustainer and your provider. And that is the link between the two, the first way. And we're going to continue talking about that link after the break. Until then. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are not addicted to dawah Addiction implies a short term fix One doesn't need to get into the zone to talk about Islam You do dawah because it is a natural result of your commitment to Allah. If you don't talk, people are going to walk. The most effective combination in the propagation of true Islam is found in dawah ilallah. Join me, Arib Islam, as we go through dawah ilallah only on Peace TV. Follow the tips to make the task of Dawa result oriented in Dawa Ilallah. Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back after the break. We're talking about knowing Allah Azza wa Jal and affirming that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is who He is and He does what He does. And at the same time, from the point of view of your worship, declaring that Allah Azza wa Jal is the only one that deserves those actions of worship to be done for him. And we said that these two things are not separate issues, but they are the same issue. And they are intrinsically linked and they come together. Because if you know that Allah is your Lord, and if you know that Allah is your creator, and if you know that Allah is your sustainer, and if you know that Allah is your provider, then by your nature, how can you make a partner with Allah when you know that that partner you make with Allah has none of the qualities of lordship that Allah Azza wa Jal has? You know that that idol doesn't benefit you besides Allah. You know that idol doesn't cause you to die. You know that idol doesn't give you life. You know that that idol doesn't send down the rain. You know that that idol doesn't control the universe. How is it that you could make an idol besides Allah? Do not make a partner with Allah in his worship when you know that only Allah is the one who has the qualities of lordship. So this knowledge, it leads you to the worship of Allah. Let's look at it from the other way. When you worship Allah alone, why do you worship Allah alone? You're a person, inshallah ta'ala, like all the brothers and sisters who are watching at home, who worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and you only pray to Him, you only make dua to Him, you only fear Him as He deserves to be feared, and you only love Him as He deserves to be loved, and you only hope in Him as He deserves to be hoped in. When you make hajj, you make it for Allah, and when you fast, you fast for Allah. Why? If you think about the answer, you're going to say, the reason that I do these things is because I know that Allah is my Lord and my sustainer and my provider 
and that nobody can harm me or benefit me but him. So your knowledge of Allah led you to worship him and your worship of him was based upon the fact that you know him. And by gathering these two aspects together, as Muslims, we become muwahidun, people who truly worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And they don't make any partners with Allah. People who know Allah and they affirm for Allah what he affirmed for himself and what his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam affirmed for him. And people who direct all of their worship to Allah Azza wa Jal alone. If we look at the prophets, why were the prophets sent? None of the prophets were sent for the first reason, to tell the people to come to know Allah. That is something that naturally happened along with what they were sent with. But the reason that they were sent was to tell the people to worship Allah. Why? We know that Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ we sent to every nation a messenger saying, worship Allah and avoid false gods. So the message of every prophet was not, you have a creator, was not, you have a sustainer, was not that Allah gives you life and death. The very first message of every prophet was, worship Allah, your Lord and my Lord, and avoid everything that is worship besides him. Worship Allah. Read through the Quran. Read through the ayat that talk about the prophets in the Quran and find one ayah where the prophet is commanding his people, I've come to you to tell you Allah exists. I've come to you to call you to recognize that Allah is your creator. I've come to you to inform you that the rain descends by Allah Azza wa Jal. All of the Quran talks about these prophets saying, Ya qawmi abudullah, ma lakum min ilahin ghayr. O my people, Worship Allah, you don't have anything that deserves worship but Him. Why? Because in history, the overwhelming majority of people have always recognized they have a Creator and have always recognized that they have a Supreme Lord. But the problem is that they haven't always worshipped Him. And this was the problem Quraysh suffered from. And this is the problem that us as Muslims need to be aware of today and need to address in our communities. If we want to follow the example of our noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, then this example is to begin by calling the people to worship Allah azza wa jal alone. Occasionally, you may come across some people who don't believe in any creator or any sustainer or any provider. In this case, you need to do both. You need to tell them about their creator and encourage them to worship that creator. And it's not enough for you to simply tell an atheist that you have a creator. Because if an atheist goes from atheism to simply accepting that he has a creator that has not entered him into Islam, what makes you a Muslim and what gives you that basic belief is that you know Allah and you worship him. You know Allah and you worship Him. So for most people, in the majority of the history of time and the stories of the prophets, it's always been simply to deal with the second part, worship Allah. Because those people were generally, by and large, people who already recognized that they had a creator. However, if you have to deal with an atheist, then you're going to have to take them through two stages. Through the initial stage that everybody else is at, that you have a creator and a sustainer and a provider, and then to the stage where you worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone and that you worship none other than Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, brothers and sisters, is the fundamental belief of Islam. We've been through all of these episodes so far to explain to you this simple concept. This simple, simple concept that is mentioned throughout the Qur'an. In fact, every single ayah in the Qur'an is an evidence for it. Pick any ayah in the Qur'an and this ayah is an evidence for what we've said, either directly or indirectly. Every ayah, pick an ayah, every ayah is an evidence that you need to know Allah and that you need to submit yourself to Allah and worship Him alone. Either by giving you a command you have to follow 
That means you recognize that Allah is your Lord and He is the one that is deserving of commands and you recognize that He is the only one who is deserving of that obedience subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship of Him. Well, it's a prohibition and the same applies. Or it's a statement about Allah Azza wa Jal that leads you to worship Him alone. Or it's a command to worship Him alone. Or a prohibition from making a partner with Him. The whole Qur'an is based on this. This is not something that we found from a few historical books or even from the writings of the scholars. The whole of the Qur'an from beginning to end. Look at Surah Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. In the first ayah, you join between worship and between acknowledging that Allah Azza wa Jal is your Lord and affirming that Allah is your Lord. So you affirm His Lordship and the word Lord covers all of the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of the attributes that relate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His actions. And then you praise Allah Azza wa Jal, which is your act of worship that you only do for Him. Ar-Rahman Rahim. That you affirm that Allah is the most merciful and nobody else is the most merciful other than Him. And you affirm that Allah is the bestower of mercy and He bestows His mercy upon whomsoever He wishes from His slaves and nobody does this but Him. Maliki Yawmiddin. That Allah Azza wa Jal, you affirm for Him that He is the supreme sovereign of the Day of Judgment and the master of the Day of Judgment, and that there is no one who will have any authority on that day except for what Allah Azza wa Jal has given them. لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَّارِ Who is the dominion for and the sovereignty for on that day? It is for Allah, the one, the supreme, or the one, the subjugator. And then, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ it's only you that we worship. It's only you that we seek help from. And that's because we know that our Lord is Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin. And because we know those things, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in. It's only you, Allah, that we worship. And it's only you, Allah, that we seek help from. And seeking help is a type of worship, as we've learned. Seeking help is a type of worship. But it's mentioned because it is one of the most common aspects of worship that people divert to other than Allah. Is that they seek help from other than Allah Azza wa Jal in those things that only Allah can do. So the Quran specifically emphasizes it. Allah Azza wa Jal confirms and affirms it. Just to, to drill home that point that this is an area that many people of the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal that many people have fallen short in. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ and this is just the first few ayat of the Qur'an. Begin ayatul kursi, ayah number 255 from Surah Al-Baqarah. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. That there is nothing deserving of worship but Allah. And that we affirm and we know that Allah is al-hayyu al-qayyum. And al-hayy is that Allah Azza wa Jal has the most perfect form of life. The ever living. The one who never sleeps or slumbers and the one who never loses a moment or the one that never misses anything. And Al-Hay covers all of the attributes that relate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Himself. And that Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Qayyum, the one who is always engaged in looking after His slaves and His servants. And He provides for them and He sustains them. And this covers all of the names of Allah Azza wa Jal and His attributes that deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowing and giving and providing and sustaining his creation. So you know Allah Azza wa Jal is al hayyul Al-Qayyum. You affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al hayyul Al-Qayyum. And this has led you to La ilaha illallah, Allahu la ilaha illahu, that there is no God worthy of worship but Him. And this is the essence of your belief and the essence of La ilaha illallah. In the next episode, insha'Allah ta'ala, we're going to talk about the opposite of La ilaha illallah. What happens when a person strays from it in one way or another and makes a partner with Allah Azza wa Jal? That's coming in the next episode, insha'Allah ta'ala. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, Allah, you are my Lord. I bow to you. Allah, Allah, you are my Lord. I bow to you, Allah. Oh my Allah, you are my Lord. I bow to you.